Hello, I'm Dr. Armin Leone. I work as a reproductive toxicologist here in Washington, D.C. In the past 30 years, I've worked on safety questions involving the Rely Tampon and the Today Contraceptive Sponge on behalf of my own small organization. My income is derived from my work with the Reproductive Toxicology Center. I have no affiliation with any commercial products or their manufacturers, and I don't own stock in any drug companies. Because of my past work on the safety of tampons and intravaginal contraceptives, details about the menstrual cups came to my attention a few years ago. In this short video, I'll explain my concern that the use of the menstrual cups may increase the risk of endometriosis. None of the labels for the menstrual cups currently warn users about this possible risk, a risk the US FDA has called plausible. I have petitioned the FDA on this matter and forwarded relative, relevant information to all the manufacturers of the menstrual cups. This video is intended to explain these concerns to interested consumers. As you may know, menstrual cups are used by women to retain discharge during menstruation. I often refer to menstrual cups as menstrual retention devices. Menstrual cups have two general shapes. One type, such as the instead cup, is shaped like a diaphragm to cover the mouth of the cervix. The second type is a bell-shaped cup that sits lower in the vaginal canal. Both types are made of non-absorbing materials and act by blocking the release of menstrual fluid from the body. Tampons play a similar role, but use absorption of fluids to control menstrual discharge. Before we consider what can happen when using a menstrual cup, let's review endometriosis. Endometriosis is a medical condition in women in which endometrial cells grow in areas outside of the uterine cavity. Endometrial cells normally line the inside of the uterus and grow each month during the menstrual cycle. If an ovum is released and fertilized by a sperm, it implants in the endometrium and produces hormones to keep the endometrium growing and produce a placenta. Without the influence of a fertilized egg, the endometrium degenerates and peels off the uterine lining, producing the discharge of a monthly period. When a woman develops endometriosis, endometrial cells that continue to grow and break down with her monthly cycle are typically found growing on the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and around the uterus. These growths can cause pain and infertility. The classic explanation for the most common forms of endometriosis is that degenerating endometrial tissue is released from the lining of the uterus and flows back through the fallopian tubes to survive and grow inside the gut. Over a century ago, early gut surgeons reported finding blood at the end of the fallopian tubes and in the gut when they operated on menstruating women. If the fallopian tubes aren't open to the uterus, a woman's ova can't migrate into the uterus. The same open system lets menstrual tissue get back to the ovaries, one of the most common sites of endometrial growths. Although backflow doesn't explain all forms of endometriosis, it is the most direct and reasonable explanation that explains how the endometrial tissue gets into the peritoneum and why the most common sites of endometriosis are the ovaries and nearby areas. There are decades of research and clinical cases supporting the backflow explanation for endometriosis. But in the last few years, some critics have complained that endometrial growths are not biochemically identical with healthy endometrial tissue, and they've suggested that these differences undermine the backflow explanation. But endometrial growths are derived from degenerated endometrium, therefore it's unlikely that all the components of healthy tissue would survive and thrive in their novel location, the gut. Rather, differences in tissue components would seem likely. The proximity of endometrial growths to the uterus and their hormonal sensitivities would seem to be key factors supporting their origin in the uterus. Using a silicone or rubber device that retains menstrual discharge in the uterus and the vagina seems very likely to increase the amount of endometrial backflow into the gut. Most women have some endometrial backflow. Only 10 to 15 percent develop clinical cases of endometriosis. Among the factors that may explain these differences are a particular woman's anatomy, the size and volume of her menstrual discharge, and immune factors which probably play a role in patrolling and eliminating some endometrial tissues in the gut. Unlike an absorbent product that will leak when it can no longer absorb, the menstrual cups, as solid barriers, would act like an eyedropper bulb when compressed and help squeeze fluid back into the uterus and gut. Wearing a menstrual cup and increasing the volume of backflow seems likely to overwhelm the defenses that protect most women from having a problem with endometriosis. This is a key concern about the role menstrual cups may play 
in increasing the risk of endometriosis. A detailed account of these concerns was presented to the U.S. FDA in a citizen's petition in 2003. In the FDA response to that petition, these concerns were called physiologically plausible. That was a time when the FDA was reluctant to act on a great many concerns brought to their attention. We're hoping the new administration will give more attention to these and many other safety issues. You may hear the menstrual cups described as FDA approved. You can check the details in the citizen petition to learn that the menstrual cups were not evaluated by the FDA for safety, but given approval using a grandfather clause for products that were already on the market when the FDA took control of these and other medical devices. If you'd like to see more done to evaluate the safety of the menstrual cups and improve the labeling of these products, telling women about these concerns, I strongly recommend writing the manufacturers and sending copies of your letter to the FDA. The FDA is essentially a political organization and hearing from consumers can get things done. Thanks for your attention. If you'd like more information, please feel free to contact me.